Are you ready to talk Christmas, brother? Well, that's good, because that's exactly what we're covering here on episode 37 of this week in gray. This is This Week in Grip. It's episode 37. I've got Alan Hynek on the line, and Ricardo managed to get in here on time as well. This is episode 37. We were going to be talking about the inch dumbbell, folks, but I forgot that there was a contest coming up, and it was Gripmas, and it's in the books now, and we're going to be talking about that first. Stick around for that. Alan, where are we at for usage of the... Hashtag this week in grip. Any idea, last I, boy? Yep, last I checked, we're at the 703 posts now. Oh, so. oh boy, we've gone over 700, Ricardo. You believe it, big boy? I, I, I do believe it because grip is growing in popularity. I, I do believe it. That's right, man. That's right. Cool. So just as a reminder, everybody, for the times when we cover people's feet, you want to make sure to use the hashtag... This week in grip, and we will be able to see exactly what you put out there. Also, want to remind everybody to give the video a like. This will help spread the word of grip all across YouTube. It'll show YouTube's algorithm that the show is popular, and it will present that video to more people to watch it and get it in front of more people's eyes. That's what it's all about. That's what we're trying to do. Because remember, everybody, the first rule of grip sport is you tell everybody about grip sport. Now, we're going to be talking about gripness a lot today, but before we do that, uh, Ricardo has a little announcement he would like to make about the upcoming Fit Expo. And, Ricardo, why don't you go ahead and take that away, big boy? Yeah, well, the LA Fit Expo is is coming up here in, in about three and a half weeks, and the start list is looking pretty good, guys. I have to tell you, um, right now, it's an international contest as usual, and right right now, there are two weight class divisions. Oda's never done that before. He's going to have a 220 and under class, 100 kilos and under. That's 220.4 for those of you out there who are converting that. And then he's going to have an unlimited category, and it looks like in the 220 class, early predictions for some of the more – and, again, the whole field is very talented. But some of the more talented people include Eric Roussain from Canada, Alexander Filimonov, who's a fantastic Russian lifter. Um, he's done 98 kilos as a teenager on the Rolling Thunder, so almost 220 on Rolling Thunder in a contest. Just outstanding. And uh, I'm going to do my best to, to make those guys work for their hardware. And then... In the super heavyweights, it's like a clash of the titans. You've, of course, got the titanium viking, Ode Haugen himself, with two hip replacements. You've got Carl Myers Cow. You've got Martins Lesis of World's Strongest Man fame. You've got Clay Edgen, the giant from Santa Cruz. And, that's right, Alexi is coming from Russia again. Wow. So... That is, like, literally like the Clash of the Titans, you guys. This is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And he's still accepting entries. So um, there are also some women entered, and I'm going to be honest. I don't want to be rude, but I'm not 100% familiar with uh, the women competitors entered. And uh, there's also some other competitors entered that I'm not personally familiar with. But it's not too late. If you still want to enter... Go on Ode Haugen's website, odhaugen.com. Google LA Fit Expo 2017, Vice Viking. Figure out how to find it and enter. There's still time. So, guys, any comments on that start list? Well, I see, think in Tukalov there, that'll be something. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. What does he do? 
you know what he does for a living? Uh, is he just a professional athlete, Tukalov? I, uh... I think he's a professional athlete. He spends, you know, I've competed against him twice. He's very humble. He's very quiet. Um, he definitely knows some English. Um, he's not as uh, verbal as uh, Roman Penskovsky, uh, the other, you know, really big Russian arm lifter. Um, Roman's not coming, I guess, although he told me on Instagram, I try it as possible. That was his quote, but I'll just send him another message and see if he's like can try to peer pressure him into coming. I mean, it is really expensive for those guys to get over here. Um, Ooh, Alexi has a, a Alexi has a number. It was expensive for me to go there last year. Uh, Alexi has a number of sponsors, and um, I'm not exactly sure how he puts it all together. I know he trains sometimes with you all, Harju in Finland. Sometimes he posts videos training in Thailand. You know, I, I just don't really know how he does it. But his latest videos, he's bigger than ever. I would guess he's probably around a hundred, close to 300 pounds in these videos. And um, he's lifting some massive weight. So um, we'll see what happens. Very cool, man. What's the chances you think of the, of them ever doing like a – well, I guess they do. They do Facebook live streaming, don't they? Uh, for the Fit Expo? Okay, so I know that one of Ode's, um, a guy that he coaches and who's part owner in the gym, Romark, who's quite a good uh, lighter weight lifter and a lightweight Moz wrestler, um, he is going to be, he told me when I was at the gym two weeks ago training, he told me he was going to be doing, producing the Expo. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that means, um, but... Um, he's going to be producing it, whatever that means. So I, I don't know if it's some kind of, you know, for TV, uh, TV uh, show deal or it's for the live stream. I'm not exactly sure. So um, I can try to get more details. I was going to Russia tomorrow for uh, Moz Wrestling, the World Championships there, the World Cup. Uh, I think it's in Moscow. So he's going to be unavailable for a week pretty much. So I can try to find out more about that for our next show if uh, on how, you know, like you guys in the East and Midwest can watch the thing if you're so inclined. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I know uh, I for- I totally forgot that he had live streamed before. So oh, yeah. that's, that's basically yeah, what he, I was going to talk about. Or ask yeah, about. He, definitely did it in, he definitely did it in Anaheim, and I think it worked pretty well. And I think he's done it um, for a few of the other ones that he's done. Excellent. So, well, for the people that can't get there and want to watch, hopefully it gets uh, streamed or shown somehow and we'll be able to tune in. That would be cool. Alan, any any comments from you, buddy, on these on the, this clash of the titans here? No, say how does that how does that women's class work on that, Ricardo? Because I didn't actually realize that was a, a women's event as as well when we were talking about that last week. Well, um, we've never had a women's class at the LA Fit Expo before. I, I'm not sure uh, if there's a weight. I think the weight division is going to depend on the amount of entrance because if there's like five or six entrants, then everyone will get the medal, right? So I, I don't know yet what's happening as far as weight division or um, entrance because this is the first time we've had the, the women's division. You know, like I said, Ode is really trying to promote the sport. He's really trying to get more people involved in the arm lifting and grip in general. Um, he's been hosting more contests at his gym. Um, you know, he's just got more people doing the events, and I think that's the start, right? You've got to get people touching the implements, and then they might want to compete later. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I think it depends on the final start list, to be honest, you guys. I, and, and obviously the entry cutoff was Sunday, but he's still accepting late entries in the grip because there's space. If there wasn't space, he wouldn't be accepting late entries. But right. sure. But yeah, I mean, this is if if someone's wanting to compete with some of the big boys, I mean, you know, between Alexi and Clay, obviously it doesn't include you, Jed, but because you're not going to be there. But Alexi and Clay, I mean, a world record in the number four could go down. Um, mm-hmm. you know, for sure. So, well, it just depends on what they've been training and how how ready they are. Mm-hmm. But the LA Fit Expo, like I told you last time, there will be thousands of people around the thing, watching between the strong man and the grip. Thousands. Excellent. You know, and then, go ahead. 
Oh, I'd I'd love it if, if if somebody like you know Morgan Choi or or Devorn Harris, if some of these monsters showed up at something like that to see how they'd do too, especially in some of the the gripper events. You know, seeing what seeing what Morgan can do with us, that'd be that'd be insane, especially after some of the training footage we'd seen recently. Yeah, well, that guy's really strong at closing it. I don't know how good he is at Silver Bullet. I mean, uh, of course, he's obviously got all the gripper skills in the world, right? So, but I think. You know, Jed, Jed is obviously much better than I am. Uh, obviously, holding it still is a different – to me, it's a totally different event in a silver bullet hold than it is closing at those last few millimeters. Me Any too. comments, Jed? Oh, it's absolutely a different event. I mean, I can't, I can't get past a quarter-inch space between the handles on my lightest four, but I can probably hold that four for 30 seconds on a silver bullet. So – yeah, that there you go. It's, it's it's totally different. It's all in. Uh, I'm sure if you looked at attachment points in the hand, there's going to be some kind of advantage for uh, certain people, and that's going to carry over to deeper closes. And there's going to be advantages for others for just holding the gripper parallel with something in between it. So, uh, yeah, and a, a lot of that could end up even coming down to thumb length and the ability to wrap the thumb over the gripper and uh, just maintain that position there. Who knows? We'd have to, like, look at it and really study it. You know what I mean? So uh, Yeah, that's my that's my biggest problem is my thumbs are not like yours or Tanner's or something. I, I can't really do that. For me, it's neither can Alexi. For, for us, it's like just squeeze the thing shut. Mm-hmm. I don't have – I can't really – there's nothing for me to lock on when a silver bullet's in place. To, uh, my hands aren't that big. Yeah. So – so, yeah, I mean, you're right. Everyone's got different strengths and weaknesses and, and talents. How much is your lightest number four? What's it, about 200 pounds, Jed? 199. Yeah, 199.4 yeah, yeah. and 199.5. That's on my RGC, which a lot of people say doesn't count. So, um, <laughs> Of course it counts. I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, I'm Whatever. telling you. But, yeah, I'm so it's about, about 200. Point. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the lower end usually of number four. That's what I would imagine. And they're so, very old, yeah. very old number fours. Like I'm talking uh, early double stamps with no captains of crush around the handles yeah, or, yeah. Um, or on the bottom of the handle itself. Just just fours. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well that siren. They, they, I think I think that siren means it's supposed to talk. We're supposed to talk about gripness now. Yeah. Let's yeah, jump in. Was. It is. It is a siren for sure. Yeah. yeah who knows? Some fire engine going by. Yeah, well, hopefully everybody's that's fine. Right. We can we can transition there, and uh, I hope more people more people get fired up because I think there's going to be some records going down in this in this contest for yeah, sure. Absolutely, there's going to be some numbers or uh, some big numbers for sure. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um. All right, Jed. Well, hey, it's Grimace. You got second place. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Thanks. And uh, so you know, I was the first loser. Um, Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I I you wanted did a great job. The, I mean, second place. No, I appreciate it. Um, just uh, my injury held me back a lot more than I thought it would. The it actually hurt. It actually was painful for me on the two hand pinch, which I was not anticipating at all. So that was a that was a shot in the gut. But I wanted to go over the the competitor list before well, we get well, to well, yeah. and, and the Well, yeah, and the guy you lost to, it's not exactly you lost to some scrub either. So no, no, no. That's for sure. Yeah, so this is – I'm just going to run down the order what I have here, and I'm not sure if this was like the end order, you know, how everybody finished. I really don't know. This is just the order uh, when I took a picture of the screen. Um, Andrew Derniat, he's from Worcester, Ohio. Me, Wyluse in Pennsylvania. Cesare Richeza that everybody calls Chez. He's from uh, upstate New York somewhere outside of the, I guess a little bit out of the city. Jason Gonzalez, which I can't remember where he's from. Anybody know where he's from? No, but he had some good results. I saw the results. That dude's pretty strong. Yeah, he's very strong, very strong. Chris Rice ran the contest. He's out of um, uh, Crooksville, Ohio. Nick Rosendahl is from the outskirts of Columbus, Ohio. Nate Browse, he's from South Jersey. Andrew Pankey is from Michigan. Donald Cummings, man, 
I, I believe he's from Michigan as well. Can anybody back me up on that? I, I, I believe he is from, from Michigan. Yep. Yeah. We got Anton. Let me check. Anton Torella. And he he's one of the guys that's right in there with uh, Chez and Nate. So he's from either New York somewhere or New Jersey. I'm not sure which. He sounds like New York when you talk to him, but yeah. <laughs> hard to say. Yeah. Anthony Clarino also is from that neck of the woods. Chris Andrade from uh, Derby, Connecticut. Mike McMillan, uh, I want to say that he's also from Connecticut. Rich Cottrell, he's from the Philadelphia, Westchester area. And then Adam Silva, he came down with uh, Jason Gonzalez. So they, they came together. So they're from about the same spot. This is Adam's second competition that he's been to, but only the first one that he competed in. He accompanied Jason to the Nationals this year in uh, in Tennessee, in Nashville. <clears throat> so that's the that's the competitor group. There were other people that were uh, speculated to be there. One name was Eli Keener, which I don't know if you know that name, Alan or Ricardo. You ever hear that name before? No. Eli Keener? I've never heard no. of it. No. Okay. So he competed in a handful of contests back in like 2005, and he was an absolute beast. Uh, lifted the inch dumbbell along with his brother at the second night of strength at the Arnold Classic in 2005. Absolute beast. Rugged son of a gun. Hasn't been involved in grip in I don't know how long, probably 10 years. Um and uh, for a while, he was, you know, riding around the country on motorcycles, I know. But other than that, I really don't know. I haven't, haven't really uh, been able to keep track of him. But uh, it was, I was looking forward to seeing him if he ended up coming, but he, he didn't come. So uh, could have really shook things up uh, by, by showing up, but he didn't make it. And then there were some other names. Josh Henze was was going to be there, and I believe he had some kind of work thing come up, so he wasn't able to make it. But a uh, good group, a good group, lots of perennial attendees here. Uh, Derniat, me, Chez. Um, I guess Ch- this was Chez's first Gripmas, I guess. He's been to other Ohio contests. Uh, Rosendahl, been there since day one. Andrew Pinky since, like, the second one. And then uh, Chris Andrade has come with me before. Rich Cottrell has come before. Really good group. The the events were, first off, it was the Ivanko Super Gripper for the first event. Um, the next event was the Euro Two-Hand Pinch. Third event was the Medley. And then the last event was a, a double sledge lever inside of a rack, inside of like a guide with a, a bottom pad and a top pad to measure the... That thing looks super cool, that setup. Yes. Looks super that was cool. A, that was a very clever way of doing that, a real safe way and, and repeatable, too. It kind of took some, some English out of that, so that was a good yeah. idea. Yeah, the this has is probably at least the third, maybe the fourth generation of sledge lever events that have taken place there, so uh, this was without a doubt, in my opinion, the best one. And Really? Kept things, cool. Yes. Kept things very safe, like Alan said, and it was very... I'm going to use the word standard. Um, yeah. I mean, there I wasn't was, a tremendous yeah. amount of variation in the repetitions that were done. So so it was really cool. Um, so I want to I want to just comment on that, Jed, because I, I, I think that standardized word is the perfect way to do it because in that kind of event, it seems like it would be really easy to shave off some inches here and there on the repetitions, and that puts the judge in a real bad place. But since it had those bumpers – it's pretty obvious you got to touch the bumpers on the top and the bottom for it to count as a rep, and that makes it kind of idiot-proof. And uh, it was a pretty pretty nifty design. And, uh, you know, I don't know the Chris Rice guy personally. I know he's spent a lot of time in grip sport and stuff, and but he seems like he's had a lot of different design things. Obviously, he's real skilled at it, and uh, that whole setup looked, looked super cool. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And... Uh... You know, in past events, there's been – or in past contests where sledge levering has been done, it's been, you know, you bring it down to your head or the side of your head or your ear, 
uh, you know, and, and, it, and that kind of becomes a problem. Um, there's been freestanding events where you have to try to keep your hand even with your shoulder, and it just never seems to happen. Right. So in this sledge lever event, there was a platform to rest your arms on, and that made it really nice. Uh, it was set up at a height that was a bit too high for some of the competitors, but then in order to uh, take care of that variable, they were able to stand on platforms. And I uploaded a whole bunch of videos of the event today, but it was fixed on a, on a tripod, so you weren't able to see that. So the shorter competitors were able to stand on either uh, like 2 by boxes or, or, or plywood. So it, it evened everything out quite a bit. So it, so it was kind of like a preacher bench, kind of like a preacher bench for Sledgehammer inside that yeah. rack. Yeah, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You could think of it as like in the World's Strongest Man contest when they do a squat uh, and then like the bottom of the apparatus hits the ground and then they come back yeah. up or the barbell hits yeah. like a platform yeah. and you go back up. Yeah, that's yeah, perfect. for sure. Um, I don't know if uh, if you guys saw any video of the – of the Ivanko Super Gripper, um, I I've been trying to upload the shortest videos first because I, the first one I put up was the medley, and it was just so long it took like over an hour for it to upload. So I've been trying to get some of the shorter. Oh my videos gosh! Up. Yeah, just it's just my internet bad, it, man. It's so bad. But uh, if uh, I'm I'm assuming people know what the Ivanko Super Gripper looks like. If not, you can either search for it on YouTube and you'll find like old videos of mine or or you can just google it and you'll find pictures of the Ivanko Super Gripper. So the way the event is done is there's two handles. One is a fixed handle and one is moving in your fingers. And the event right. is done completely the opposite of what torsion spring grippers are done. So instead of the widest part of the gripper spread being pointing down, it's actually pointing up. So your uh, it's like doing an inverted gripper close, and the way that it, uh, the way the repetitions were completed was when the handles got close enough, they would set off a flashlight that was mounted to the bottom of the handles. So there was a nut on the the moving handle, and then on the fixed handle there was uh, an open-ended flashlight with a lead there. And when the nut and the lead touched, the flashlight was supposed to turn on. So if you got the light That's on. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> it was cool for most people. For for some reason, and we couldn't really figure out why, um, when I was taking my attempts, the nut, or the, I'm sorry, the bolt was touching the lead and the light wasn't going on. So <laughs> we don't nice. know what the problem is, but uh, it was frustrating for me because because of my right ring finger still being injured, I can't close the gripper, so I had to go left-handed, so it was very, very awkward doing it that way. I did train it left-handed, and I trained it without the flashlight, and I was making sure to go deep enough so that I was actually touching the handles together as deep as yeah. I could, because the I left the attachments on. They were just zip ties that hold the flashlight in place, and I was touching the zip ties together, so... Um, you know, that, that should have been accurate enough to carry over to the contest setup. And I think it was because I was able to bury the handles. Um, and I was able to, on, on, on my first attempt, I buried the handles. The, the light didn't come on. On my second attempt, I buried the handles, and I turned the gripper in my hand, which is actually not too easy. And I could see that the bolt was touching the lead, but it wouldn't go on. It didn't go on again on my third attempt. That one, Chris Andrade said he saw it was touching. And then finally, on my last attempt, the light turned on. So, I mean, it, it made it kind of you tough. You know what, Jed? Yeah, what? what? Is, it, is it possible that because you did it lefty, it, it, it made it touch at a weirder angle compared to probably everyone else's righty? And yeah. maybe it had to do with just the... Uh, you know, just like Iron Mind is the left turn grippers, which work a little differently than the regular ones. May maybe just the act of doing it with the left hand caused that bolt to touch at a weird angle, 
and yeah. uh, it, it wouldn't fit off the the wire, or whatever. The connection wouldn't wasn't tight enough, or whatever. That is. That is completely possible, dude. Uh, I don't remember, but I don't think anybody else went left-handed. So, yeah. so I really I don't know. Um, it's very yeah. possible because those handles do not move in just one straight line. So, in other words, it's not like a, a G-Rex or, you know, like a Bruce Lee-type gripper where the handle is moving in pretty much a straight line. They will ah. skew a little bit. So There you go. But, but still, you go. It's, it's, it's metal touching metal. So I was assuming that it would complete the circuit, but it it wasn't working for me. So I ended up starting off uh, at six and a half points using the using the uh, proportional scoring. So the way yeah, it yeah. works is whoever gets first place gets a hundred points, and then yeah. whoever uh, every other person that doesn't uh, lead gets their score divided by the winner's score, and then they get a percentage right. scoring uh, a percentage score. So I basically had 65% of what the leader had. Which so, was uh, who? Chez on the grippers? Because he's the grip grip fiend, that guy. Yes. Was he the was winner Chez. of that one? It was Chez. And, man, I thought I took a picture, but I, I now I can't find it. I was thinking I had a picture of the leader after every after every event, but I guess I didn't get it. His number was well up over 300 pounds. For, for whatever score wow. he got, he had, I think he went to. So there's twelve, there's twelve notches on the Ivanco, and he did twelve ten, and that was like three twenty or something like that. Whatever he ended up getting, he tried twelve eleven. So the springs were up in the hardest setting, all the way to the 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 twelve yeah, yeah. eleven combination. And he didn't quite get it. It was it was pretty close. It was good effort, but he didn't quite get it. But it was he was already in first place at that point. <coughs> and then, uh, but this, this Anton, who people may not have heard of, I believe he finished in like either second or third place on this thing. His his crush was super super impressive. Um, wow! And I asked him, "What are you?" You know, basically, you're doing a TNS on. It's 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 very similar to doing a TNS on a on a on a torsion spring gripper, a, a table no set. And I asked him what he's getting, and he's only getting like a 2.5 in training. So I can just about TNS a 2.5 left-handed. So he and I were close, but he still ended up beating me by like 80 pounds. So there still seems oh. to be something off with that with that gripper. So I don't know if you've ever played with anything like that, Alan. If 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 you've done, I was actually just um. Um, I was just looking that up for the purposes of people that might not have heard of it. And if you if you Google search Ivanko Super Gripper, the, the, the first thing that pops up is something on Amazon. So it's really easy to access. Um, but then followed by some YouTube videos, and I can see you know the that gripper that doesn't that doesn't necessarily ride in a in a track or anything like that. It's more like a pendulum. It's it's fastened at the top, so it looks to me like there could be a fair amount of play near the bottom. Right. So. So what Ricardo was pointing out in, in the phenomenon that you were experiencing, it looks to me like if it was geared towards the right-handed gripster, if you will, that if somebody put it in their left hand, they could be inclined to make it walk a different direction than what it would have been exactly. fat for. Exactly. And, and, I mean, it's just it just happens to be a flaw in the design. It looks to me like it should have literally a track at the bottom, <laughs> like they could incorporate that even. But, no, it just it looks like it has a fair amount of play. And yeah. um, even looking at the prices, I didn't realize um, that that's actually a quite inexpensive gripper. So oh, that yeah. probably explains some of that manufacturing to it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's probably part of the case. Yeah. So, very but I've never held one in my hand. Um, I thought they looked a little – they just looked kind of weird for me. It's something I can't warm up to to the point of – of putting it in the ad cart thing on Amazon, I guess at this point, but <laughs> it, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess it is what it is. <laughs> Bigger fan of the torsion spring ones, I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you there. Uh, it's, it's probably a good training tool, you know, out of season or portable. If you, if you're traveling or whatever, you know, I have one of those Robert Baraban adjustable grippers. I don't use it that much. And it, I, I did take it when I went on vacation, but, I, I think if your maximum, if your goal is the Iron Mind type grippers or Mash Monster ones, you you gotta play with those. You gotta use those regularly. 
Those other ones are not the same. Right. So, Jed, hey, let me ask you a question before we go to event two. What's your perception of the percentage scoring? How do you like that as far as running meets as opposed to first, second, third, fourth, fifth? Why do you prefer it? Tell us why. I, I prefer it because you're rewarded by for your performance more accurately. So what I mean by that is if you blow somebody away with per, with uh, percentage-based scoring, you get um, – you get uh, rewarded for that performance yeah. by in the scoring because you finish yeah. uh, at a percentile, uh, if that's being used properly, um, much better than the, the next person down. It also enables you to uh, make a comeback uh, in a lot yeah, more efficient manner. And that's, that's what yeah. I'm going to talk about when we do go to event two. Um, what I don't like about strongman scoring is that I can, if, let's say, on uh, two-hand pinch, I, I lift 250 and the next person gets 200. Well, I did, what, 25% better than them, but I only get one more point than them. Right. So, yeah. Or you know, Those numbers might not be correct. I'm not a mathematician, so don't hold that against me. But, um, you know, that's I like the percentage-based scoring for those reasons primarily. Now, strongman scoring is a heck of a lot easier, man. There's no math involved, but if you're using a Excel spreadsheet, you can you can tie all those formulas in there to be done automatically. Oh, yeah. So so it takes care oh, of yeah. it for you. And really the math is not that hard. So no. um yeah, I definitely prefer it over the strongman scoring. Yeah, I was just curious because Ode is gonna be moving to the percentage based scoring. Um uh, uh, for the arm lifting contest, we're going to be trying it out this time, and and it does reward. It's almost like getting extra credit on a test, right? It does reward you if you go above and beyond the the. And if you have one event where you're much stronger in the field, the competitors pay for it. So yeah. it definitely, it definitely is is good. Uh, if you're if you're very good, it treats you well for sure. Mm-hmm. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how uh, that affects the overall scoring on these things. But yeah. It's uh, yeah, I was just curious on your perspective. I kind of had a feeling you were going to like it. Alan, what yeah, do you we think saw, about it? We saw that phenomenon at, at Living Legends this last time around where when Andrew Derniat came in on the axle and, and blew everybody Killed away, everyone. He, yeah. was, he was way ahead on points. As a matter of fact, he was winning, and he already left the building. And it took some, some strong comebacks from some people. If you remember that, Jed, he was yeah. – his his actual performance just I mean that just put him way up. It was it was ridiculous how how big of a lead he got all of a sudden off of that. It made things yeah, he did real tough on everybody kilos. else. Yeah, he did yep. 180 kilos, and I think anyone else did maybe 155 or 160. I remember those results and being being blown away by that. But he is a yeah, so that's mastermind a, for sure. That's a that's a game changer right there doing it that way. Yep. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> no doubt. No doubt. Um, and I think they've, uh, well, I don't think, I know that they've taken results from contests and done them both ways and the scoring, it doesn't always work out exactly the same, but generally the same person wins. You see like differences in like second to fourth place a lot of times, but then right. like the bottom of the pack is usually pretty, pretty much the same. You don't see much right. variation there. So... Yeah. Cool. So, All right. Well, sorry for that little divergence, but I wanted to get your take on it because a lot of people might not be familiar with the percentage-based scoring. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No problem. No problem at all. And like I said, you know, you're able to mount a comeback a little bit better. So I was, like I said, I had six and a half points after the gripper, but I knew that I could make a really good comeback, especially over Chez, who was in first place, because I knew that I'd be able to um, – pick up some ground on them so um the way it worked out is a whole bunch of us went on 58 millimeters so on the euro everybody that wants 44 millimeters they go all by themselves then 48 goes all by themselves then 52 and so on so when we got to 58 millimeters i think there were like five or six people so we were able to pound right through that and both andrew and chez we're both on 58 millimeters with me. So with my first attempt of 239, I was able to beat uh, Chez, who topped out at 194, and also Andrew, 
who topped out at 224. And uh, I believe he said that his third attempt felt pretty hard, so he waved off his final attempt. So, so I got the event win in my first attempt. So it felt very easy. I jumped up to 249, and all of a sudden – my right ring finger just started killing me. It started hurting so yeah. bad I couldn't even believe it. I did feel one tweak on it in my last two hand pinch workout, so I didn't I didn't train it anymore. Um, I figured just my base strength would be strong enough for me to win the event with the people that were currently signed up, so I didn't worry about it too much. But I wasn't anticipating the level of pain that I was feeling in my right hand, and I, I can't really point to anything that caused that. Um, I didn't feel the best during the contest, but um, I credit that to not listening to what my good friend Chris Tank Andrade told me. I wanted to get a really good night's sleep in the hotel before we went to the contest, and I took a dose of NyQuil, basically uh, dollar store NyQuil, the generic. He goes, dude, I wouldn't do that. You're going to get a NyQuil hangover. I'm like, what the hell is that? I've never even heard of that before. Because, I, I, you know, I'll right. take NyQuil when I'm sick and stuff like that. And I've never, I don't remember ever feeling any, like, medicine head, NyQuil hangover, anything like that, that I would describe as that. But I've I'll never heard of what, that myself. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what, dude. I felt like turds uh, for the first two events of this contest. And I didn't really, I still didn't tie it to the NyQuil. But after the competition, I went up to Chris, and I used his pre-workout again that I always use. And I said, <laughs> dude, that pre-workout didn't do anything for me this time. I wonder why. He goes, well, dude, you took that NyQuil. You were probably on the NyQuil hangover, and what it did is it probably just brought you back up to normal. Normal, so I don't, exactly. I don't, yeah, I don't know if that's true or what. But, oh, I'm I sure mean, it is. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not saying that that's why my finger hurt. I'm just saying that I experienced something that I've never experienced before, and as a learning opportunity, I will never take that stuff before a contest again, and I wouldn't recommend anybody else do it either. If you're looking for a sleep aid, I would say probably a melatonin pill or something like that would be a better option. Exactly. And uh, wow. I was told that by like three people not to take that stuff, to take melatonin, and um, I just... <laughs> Totally ignored that advice, brother. So, I was just going to yeah. throw that in. It was that it probably wasn't the NyQuil per se. Was rather it was the the sleep agent in it in itself Correct. that did it because that has such a long. Those do have long lingering effects beyond how they would how they would seem if they should knock you out for eight hours. They can last for way beyond twelve even. Yeah. You know the lingering effects. So yeah. 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 Interesting. So live and learn, dude. That's another lesson I, that I've never experienced in my almost 15 years of grip sport competition. Uh, so, you know, hopefully that's a takeaway for everybody listening. So go ahead and take that lesson and give us a like on the video, brother. Hey, Jed, I have another takeaway. That, that may explain some of those funny faces you were making in the car before and after the contest. Uh, that may, maybe that's it while you were listening to those various music as you were giving us your... Uh, play-by-play play of your music playlist. That, Dude, that might explain it right there. I'll tell you what. I got such good feedback on those pictures. And Sean Capusta, <laughs> Sean Capusta really blew the top off of things with his post. I don't know if you guys saw it, but he isolated he's pretty, he's pretty Chris funny guy. Andrade. Dude, he isolated Chris Andrade in four of the pictures. He stacked them all up against one another. And he, he, he basically made... The, the best meme that I've seen in like the last six months, when you're ready, when you're always ready to drop a body. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> yeah, was hilarious. He's a, the composer guy, I don't know him, but, but I have interchanged with him on Instagram frequently. He is a funny guy. He's freaking hilarious. <laughs> well, that was definitely, uh, I mean, the high point, man. I mean, when you're, when you're four and a half hours into a six hour trip and, uh, you know, you're looking for anything possible to entertain yourself. I thought I had it going good enough by uploading those pictures, but then he totally, he totally took care of business with that, with that meme. And I, I had to do a screenshot and, and share it because it was amazing. Yeah. All right, event three, Jed. 
Event three, the the marathon medley. Yeah, dude, that's the medley. So, uh, Gripmus is famous for having just absolute marathon medleys, like you just said. It's a four minute time limit, and uh, you never know how many challenges are going to be in the event. Last year at Gripmus, I was not there, but I know that they, that Chris had built some climbing wall campus board style stuff into his gym and incorporated some of the climbing tests into the medley. And uh, <coughs> if I can remember what they were, I, I, I can't tell you what difficulty level of the campus board they were on. Maybe somebody can post that in the comments section below. But one of them was doing a pull-up on the campus board. One was going from level one to level six on the campus board, climbing it like a ladder. And then one was going from level one and then touching level six with one hand. So kind of like you were like heaving your body up to get your next grip hold on the rock above. So, and if you did all three of those feats, you got eight points. So right there, those, those were eight points that I was not even going to try due to my finger. But going into the medley, I ran some numbers. I went over to the, to the competition score, score sheet, and I plugged in a few things. And I figured, um, well, Andrew had done the, the count, and there were 64 possible points that could be attained. So if you topped out on everything, you could get 64 points. And what I mean by that is, in some cases, if the discipline were block weight lifting, then you would have three different block weights that you could pick up. And if you picked up the easiest block weight, you got one point. If you picked up the medium block weight, you got two points. And if you picked up the hardest block weight, then you would get three points. And it right. was like that throughout most of the medley. Not all of it, but um, most of it. So if you did the, the top level feat of all of those uh, challenge disciplines, then you could get three and you would maximize your score. So figuring um, a 64 point uh, possible total and then eight points that I wasn't going to be able to get, I was figuring that if I got 50 and that if Andrew and Chris – got 45 because I think Chris was in third place at this point, Chris, uh, Chris Rice, I would be able to, I, th I can't remember if I would pull into first place all by myself or if I would have been just a fraction of a point behind Derniat. I can't quite remember now. And again, I thought I took a picture of it, but I can't find it. So it must not have, it must not have registered properly on my phone. So I have to apologize for that because that would have been a lot cooler of a story if I would have if I would have been able to capture that, but I didn't. But um, as it turned out, the way that the the scores turned out, 50 was not going to be enough because this beast Derniat got 54 points. He I saw that in the thing. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. He ran he ran the table on the campus board. He. He did the 20-pound sledge lever, which I didn't get, so that was another three-pointer that he got to my two. Um, and oh, then, let me ask you this, Jed: What yeah. foiled him? What foiled Ernie at out of the ten points he didn't get? What What was the stumbling block for him? Um. Well, really he didn't, question, he didn't get the three-point plate pinch because that was my new set of two 25 kilo plates. And I didn't get that either, so that both foiled us. In fact, um, I didn't even try it. I doubt he did either. Um, what else foiled him? I believe... Was it a flask or anything? I saw several flasks in one of the videos. Yeah, I, I'm sure he can lift the blobs and all the dumbbells because he's, he's, very, he's very good at that stuff. I'm yeah. curious as what his quote-unquote weakness is, if anything. He really... He really doesn't have a weakness. I think the stuff that he didn't get, I think he was playing it safe to avoid injury. I know one of the things he didn't get was one of the rotations, one of the floor rotations with the hammers. So uh, Chris, Chris has a <coughs> an eight pound. Excuse me. 
Chris has an eight pound sledge with a with a giant nut welded to it, and then he can bolt another plate to it. And one of the things that Andrew and I both did was the internal and external floor rotation with that eight pound hammer. But what I had Chris do is once I did the eight, I had him attach it to the uh, the extra weight to the hammer, and then I went back and I did the internal external with the nine and a quarter pounds. And Andrew ah. didn't. Andrew wasn't able to do that with both of them. Um, he may have done it with one of them, but I don't ah. think he didn't do it with both. So I think that was more of I'm not really going to try this because yeah, yeah, yeah. he hasn't trained it. Um, Got it. I, I would hey, did you know? Did you know he was coming? Did you know he was coming to the contest? Oh yes, yes, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, man, I've got his, I've got his medley on my other phone, uh, my other camera, but I haven't gone through that footage yet. And I'd love to be able to tell you the feats that he didn't get. But the yeah, it's fine. It's not a big deal. I was just, I was just curious because the guy is obviously just like you are one of the elite, elite people. I didn't know that he was going to the contest. And, um, yeah, I actually reached out to him today, and I said, hey, maybe you can go to the Philly Fit Expo. And he said he would told me to tell him when the events were. So we'll see what, what when the events had decided. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, darn, I'm kicking myself for not knowing what he didn't hit. I, I... That's fine. Let's talk about your medley. Yeah, well, I so I I did real well. Um, I was Good. I was happy with what I did. However, once I got so there were a series of flasks which you talked about, and there right. were a series of narrow pinches which basically were like half inch um, steel slates basically that were your ring your ring finger pin. killed you on those. Absolutely, I dude. I I saw Absolutely. that. Yeah. Yep, that yep. that hurt bad there. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to find positions where I could either curl that finger or even leave it off the side of the implement. Yeah. And then yeah. like overload my left hand, but it just it just wasn't possible. Um, maybe if I would have tried those feats at the very beginning when I was fresh, maybe I could have done them with the offloaded grip, but I I I have no idea. So I would say uh, the t- I, I missed top points on the narrow pinches, on the flasks, and there was a three-point climber pinch, which is a piece of square tubing attached to a loading pin, and I couldn't do that either, and there were no lighter options. So that really How heavy was that one? I saw that the climber pinch block yeah. in there by the flasks, and I, yeah. I was curious how heavy it was. Yeah, I'm not sure, man. I want to say it was probably 200 pounds, maybe maybe a little bit more. I'm not sure. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And was that a four a four inch bar or a three inch bar? What's that? The climber pinch? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, more along the lines of two inch, maybe two and a half. Okay. In that range. All right. Yeah. I dare say that if it were three inches, I might have been able to get it because it would have changed the. Like the angle on the finger, the hand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That really thin, like how you had it, it almost leaves that part of your finger unsupported, and that would have put a lot of strain right on that, right on that pulley tendon you've been having the trouble with. Yeah, if it would have yeah. been wider, you could have got a better purchase, and you would have been a, you probably wouldn't even felt anything. I would have guessed. Yeah, but like leaving it kind of hanging in the air. Once you see some of the feats I did after the contest, you guys are going to say, "How can this guy possibly be hurt?" But those disciplines, those wider disciplines, cause me no discomfort whatsoever in my hand. Thick bar, it's almost completely unnoticeable. Um, right. It's, it's just the like the two hand pinch euro width and narrower, and then dynamic stuff like the the gripper stuff. So uh, yeah, and then of course the campus board. There, there's no way I could have done that. I'm sure it would have just ripped right off. Oh yeah, yeah. That's smart. It's smart that you skipped that stuff, Jed. It's, it's smart <laughs> that you did the gripper left-handed too, because then you would have been on the shelf for quite some time. Yeah, I might have needed surgery or something like that. You never know. So, I wasn't going to risk, you know, several months of my career when I have, I have a couple other goals that I'd rather hit, you know, in the meantime. Yeah, no kidding. So, uh, okay. yeah, but uh, 
you know, I, 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 I did as well as I possibly could minus the campus board. And I, you know, I might've been up around 54 or more if I would have gotten those narrow pinches, but you know, I was never anticipating to feel pain in those, let alone the Euro in the event before. So it is what it is, man. Sometimes you got to deal with that stuff. I know one time Derniak came to my place, I want to say 2009, and he had a torn hamstring from like a maybe a, a Highland Games uh, that he had done. And he still ended up winning the competition with a torn hamstring, and we had to do uh, Axel that day, and he pulled over 400 pounds. So, oh, wow. You know, so you gotta you gotta deal with the hand that you're given, and I wasn't able to do that yeah. and maximize it. So, um, it is what it is. I can handle that. I can handle being hurt. It's just, it is tough that the with the equipment malfunction at the beginning of the contest. So I can I can tell you that. But um, at the end of the medley, you know, I'm still in second place. I think I was behind by three points, maybe, going into the last event. Wow. Wow. And. Uh, you know, Andrew and I were talking beforehand. Uh, he wanted to know something about the sledge lever. If I'd trained it, I said, dude, I did it one time. I worked up to 37 pounds. I did a single, and I didn't do it again. I said, uh, the, one, the one difference between Chris's implement and mine is that his handles were wrapped in athletic tape, and mine were not. And we were talking about <coughs> on mine, when I when I do it on mine uh something happens with the skin uh on my thumb pad it's not a nerve pain it's not like compression of a muscle or anything it's literally the skin folds in a way in my hand that's it causes pretty pretty substantial pain um you know it, it's not like the skin's going to break or anything but it's it's very very uncomfortable so chris actually said that if anyone wanted to wear gloves in order to avoid that that we'd be able to but nobody ended up doing that and I think uh, probably the, the additional traction with the, with the tape on the handles as well as the increased size of the handle um, avoided that compression of the skin, that folding of the skin. So, I mean, I felt, I felt no pain of that, of that nature Good. in my hand during, Good. The, during the event. So it, it really came down to resolve. So... I what was the time these, limit, Chad? What is, was it yeah. a minute to do as many as you could back and forth? No, there was no time limit. So you would only get oh. if you released the implement or if you um, if you took too long of a rest at the top. So there really there was no time limit. It was like go till failure. And wow. th- as I recall, nobody like set the hammer down to the bottom position tried to hit it and failed, and then tried again and got it. I didn't see anyone do that the whole time. So basically, once you failed to get that hammer, you know, a good distance up off of that bottom pad, you were, pr- you were pretty yeah. much done. Um, you were done. Yeah. So <clears throat> I forget, you know, the exact order, but the, what I remember was I want to say Don Cummings got up there and did over 10 reps, and that you could, you could see like each time someone got a couple more reps, it was like a Roger Bannister because yeah, yeah. then the next person would get a couple more reps. And like usually it climbed up just about every single time. Uh, there, were, there were some exceptions, but you could see it was steadily climbing as you got to the, you know, closer to the number one position. So I want to say Don got 12 or maybe he got 15. I'm not sure. Then Jason Gonzalez got up and he got 15. And then I don't remember how many Chris got. I don't remember how many. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have that information here. I'm sorry. I'll let me look at my sheet. Um, yeah. So Don Cummings got ten. Okay. So that was the lead. All right. And he went. One, two, three, hey, Jed. Can I can I interrupt? Did they use yeah. reverse order of the cumulative placing? So. Yeah. So the, the person in first was going last. They basically it was had like uh, the the last chance because they were in first going into the last event. Is that is that how it was seated? Yes, the leaders yeah. leader got the advantage. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay, yeah, I just so, wanted to see that. And how heavy were these sledgehammers again? For those people that oh, don't have grip mis memorized. 
Yeah, good question. It was um, they were twelve pound hammers, and then they had a series of one and a quarters added. So it was a little over thirty pounds. They were calling it thirty pounds, but I think it was like thirty two and some change due to the the heavy. Um, you know, you have the hammers that are a certain weight, then you have the nuts and bolts that are added on, and you yeah, have, yeah. Uh, the one and a quarter. So it was like thirty two, thirty three pounds, or something like that. Okay, and one more question yep. for the people trying to simulate this at home. Did they have to hold the edge of the stick, or was it choked up, or where did they grab the stick, right at the edge? You were supposed to grab oh, it down to the edge, but once you kind of shift that hammer out. It's going to move a little bit, huh? Yeah, yeah, because, like, one thing that, and this doesn't get talked about a lot, but one of the individual differences about people's hand layout is the pinky pad on some people will protrude downward past the pinky, and sometimes that's very hard. So if you go to grip it and you have your your pinky pad as low as you can get it, in other words, you're being stopped at the pinky pad by the platform that the handles are sitting on, there can actually mm-hmm. still be up to an inch gap from the bottom of the of the handle to the bottom of your pinky. So you'll see some variation there, but it didn't look like anybody got too excessive, at least not in a way that it would have caused a tremendous improvement in in leverage. Got it. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, Don went like six, and he was the first person to get double digits. He got ten repetitions. And then a couple more guys went, and we saw Nick Rosendahl come up, and he got ten repetitions as well. So <clears throat> so those guys are tied for first at this point in the event. And then the next person up was Chris Rice, and he, he busted out 15 reps. Wow. So, so he was the first person to get 15. And then Jason Gonzalez got 14. Wow. 14 rep- uh, wait, I'm, hold on, dude. I'm off. So Chris, I'm sorry. So Chris got 10 reps. And then Jason Gonzalez is the one that got 15 reps. Wow. Okay. So he went fourth to last. After Jason, it was Chez, and he just about caught Jason. He got 14 repetitions. Chez was in third place, and then I came up in uh, the second place position, and I got 18 reps. And I got 19 off quite a bit, man, and I was straining as hard as I could, man. But I just could not get 19. I really wanted 20 reps. Um, wow. Before, I think before the event, Andrew was like, what do you think, man, 10 to 15 reps? I was like, oh, dude, I, I don't know, man. That seems like a lot of repetitions. But when you see when you see that number climbing as it hits your turn, you know, something inside of you says, I will not do less than 15 reps, you know? No, no, you, I was, no you, went, you went into overdrive. That's it. Yeah, That's I went simple. into overdrive, and I started, like, dropping brothers and woos and ooh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that, that helps me power up quite a bit, man, like Super Mario. Um, there you go. So I'm like, hey, I, I'm done. And I'm like, okay, there's 18 reps. Now all, all Dernia has to do is just, uh, you know, settle for eight, and uh, maybe I'm able yeah. to to pull past him. But no, no, that, that didn't happen, bro. Um, he went ahead and rattled out 20 repetitions, and I know he probably could have gotten one or two more. And uh, that, He's was, a machine. that sealed the deal, bro. Totally sealed the deal. He's a machine. No shame in losing to that guy. That guy is a, a stud. That's why I hope he goes to the – Philly uh, contest there. Uh, I'd love to meet him in person. That would be great. Mm-hmm. And you, of course. Yeah, Alan, you got to go, bro. Alan, you got to go to Philly. End of April. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a vacation. There's a lot of nice things to do. You and your wife can go. You can take in downtown Philly. You can look at the Liberty Bell. There's a lot of things to do there. Yeah, last time I was in Philly, it cost me 100 bucks to park my car for an hour. So I'm still a little PO'd about that one, actually. Ooh. Uh, uh. <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't sound good. That 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 sounds like a story for a different time, possibly. Yeah, with, yeah. Uh, I, 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 possibly I think I mentioned it on this program. Story. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I get to blame wow. it on my wife, though. So. <laughs> well, there you go. It's always easy to shift the blame. That's a good, good one way to do it. 
Wow, yep, 100 yep. bucks an hour. That's worse yeah. than New York City parking, Alan. That's where I'm from, yeah. New York City. Yep. That, that's I worse. did not have a good time in, in Philly, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, man. Ouch. Maybe you could do some live commentary at the Fit Expo. That would, that would you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Well, yeah. Something to think about. What else? Right. Did you guys have any other questions on Gritmas? Because, you know, maybe you brought up a lot of good questions, Ricardo. I don't know if you had any, Alan. You know, you brought Boy, up details that I wasn't able to uh, to think about on my own. So, so, so go ahead. you and Andrew Derniat didn't decide to have a 10-minute inch face-off? See who could get the most reps? No, I not, the not, for that kind of thing? Tried. We did not. I, <laughs> I, I would have liked to. Uh, like I said, man, I I was I had I had some energy left. Like I jumped out. I I busted out of my Nyquil hangover by that point, and I was doing feats of strength well into the time that people were polishing off the pizzas. Like I really? got like I got like sloppy seconds on the pizzas, dude. <laughs> like they were oh. all that was left was like you know, they were circular pizzas that were cut up into about ninety pieces. So oh, everybody yeah. else was like grabbing the center pieces that were square. I got left over with like it looked like someone went through with a jigsaw and left like the crappiest oh. hardest pieces of crust <laughs> that were left. And that's that's what I was that's able the, to hit. That's the so, stuff that's supposed to get thrown away. Yeah, it's not yeah, even that's pizza the stuff at that, that point. Usually gets tossed in the trash can and and uh, that's that's what I was left with. Yeah. Well, yeah. you went with the no pizza left behind mentality, and I think you need to receive credit for that. Although I will tell you that that term of sloppy seconds on pizza has left a, a slight stain in my uh, brain right now. That it, it may take a while to remove that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, you go back to the Thanks. the, 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 the imagery. The inch thing would have been a really cool face-off deal. Um, we did have two-inch dumbbells there. Uh, we did both perform a double-inch deadlift. I did a couple steps. I wanted to try to see if I could walk around a certain point and come back, but there was there was no doing that. Um, Derniat said he definitely could have walked with him, and there's no doubt he could have. I mean, he held him there very, very strongly. I'm sure he would have beat me on that. It would have been fun to go head-to-head on inches um that would have been really really cool um but we didn't we didn't even think about it uh a lot of i've i've uploaded some some feats i did i did a few things that i didn't have i wouldn't normally have the opportunity to try and then like what um well <clears throat> nate browse brought, brought the man enough block weight have you seen that before ricardo I've I've heard of it. It's some kind of like quasi blob that's probably heavier and taller, maybe a little thinner. But I don't know the whole stats on that thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's what they call that is a drop. It's kind of like um, it's it's the chunk that's left over from a, a piece of steel that's been used for other purposes, and uh, it's a it's a circular piece, and it yeah. weighs 88 pounds. I would say it's probably about at least 12 inches tall maybe three and a half inches thick. Um, ah. And at 88 pounds, um, it's, it's liftable as long as you can get good, good hand uh, positioning on it. Uh, and naturally, you've got to get the strength. But um, it's, it is slightly, it's, it's definitely in the realm of too large for some of the smaller-handed individuals out there. So, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's one of those deals. It's, it's blobbish in nature. Um, but I don't, I, I don't equate it to an inch dumbbell lift by any means. I think it's, it's much more a blob lift than an inch dumbbell. Yeah, yeah. Lift. Um, so did you clean that thing far. for reps then or what, Chad? Did I do it for reps? Did you power clean it? Did, did oh, the, gosh, the no. 88 pound blob? No, no, sir. no, no, sir. No, I, I, they, I wouldn't have tried that because the edge is not beveled down. And I believe oh. I would have the fear of, because it's so sharp, if I try to speed lift with it, then I might tear my skin. So so that wasn't that wasn't in the books. But, uh, might have had to call the Red Cross on that one, huh? Yes, yes. Might need a little blood, blood donation. Infusion. Yes. <laughs> there, were plenty, there were plenty of thumbs cut open during the medley on some of those implements. Also. Really? Uh, Chris Andrade... Oh. Uh, had uh, probably about half a dime 
if not acreage, cut out of his thumb by one of the flasks. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then a few other people had dings. Um, and I just remembered, uh, Dernia actually didn't take his fourth attempt on the Euro because he cut a little bit. So there were some dinged up thumbs by the end of the by the end of the contest. And I didn't want to add wow. to that list by trying to, you know, snatch the the man enough. The story behind that there is there's a there's a gripster from the New Jersey, New York area, John Manna, and he found that at like a work site or something like that. Oh wow. And uh I think Nate Browse came up with the term man enough as in are you man enough to Man uh, enough to look there, yeah. Yeah. Well, um it was cool. There was a there was a hundred and twenty five pound fat uh, not fat bastard but Selene Iron baby inch there, and I worked up to a clean and push press with it, and then also nice. um, I eventually snatched it as well. Um, so no nice. broken heads off of dumbbells this year then, huh? No, and I don't see I don't I did try to clean the the Gracie what he's referring to. Ricardo is two years ago when I was at Gripmas after the contest was done. I tried to um, clean the Gracie Bell, which is a 147 um, thick bar uh, inch style dumbbell ah. that was made out of the giant like cannonball looking shots that are used to clean out the hardened concrete in the like the con- the spinning concrete trucks. You know what I'm talking oh, wow. about? The drums. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Someone welded a handle onto those. His name was Weldon Stogsdill. And Chris Rice owns that Gracie Bell now. Last year I tried to clean it. It dropped and the weld broke. And it actually broke the implement. Um, this year that was wow. not going to happen. Someone put a weld on that. It was it was one of the most beautiful welds I've ever seen in my life. I don't know who did that, but it was fantastic. Um, and I did try to clean it, but it just wasn't there. Um I did some combo lifts with the inch and the blob. Um, I want to kind of sit on the one that I that I did because it was kind of a misses or just warm up. So I want to save that video for the YouTube page. So cool, there's some, cool. There's a little there's a little teaser little for it. Teaser. Everybody. But <laughs> there uh, you go, Jed. But yeah, I had a I had a great I had a great time. I had a great series of of uh, post contest feeding feeding um, my my feet went feet, on feet. longer than my feeding went on let's yeah. just say that hey well it sounds like that pre-workout worked after all what what kind of pre-workout was that jed that your boy had what was well, that i i didn't see i don't i didn't catch the name of it uh what he had in the past was something called mesomorph and wow. that's the stuff that i took in february that gave me the migraine well i can't say it oh. gave me a migraine i can say that i got a migraine after taking two shots of it during the uh, winter grip fest competition so wow. you know draw the dotted line how you will um got it those two things those two things happen on the same day um got it i refrained from taking the second shot at south jersey four and i turned out all right but without a doubt it was it's the best tasting pre-workout um type of supplement that i've that i've taken as far as like something that's supposed to really get you kicking uh wow and I, I just don't know if it was mesomorph that I took this time. It probably was. I just didn't read the jar this time. It would be good to know that for the people out there that know the amount of stuff they need to take to snap out of a NyQuil hangover, though. Mm-hmm. That could be that could be useful information. Yeah, if you're if you if you're trying to take a test, you know, a finals test at school, and you know you've been up all night with a head cold and you wanted to take some NyQuil to get some sleep, you know, mesomorph might be the thing you want to take in order to do the trick. Yep. Yeah. That's it. I'll know, Jed. We actually start finals week tomorrow. I'll know if any of my students, if I just hear a bunch of snapping of number two pencils tomorrow during class, I will immediately know that someone was on the mesomorph. So thank you yeah. for pointing that out. I'll be I'll be ready for that tomorrow for yeah, our finals. Dude. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You're welcome. Um, what else? Anything else? Oh, let me say this. Uh, let me ask you this, and I'd be interested in hearing – from the rest of the people listening to this, and you can leave a comment below after you hit the like button on the video, please. Does anyone know if anyone has picked up the inch dumbbell in one hand and face levered a 20-pound hammer in the other hand? Oh, that sounds very hard. 
But there's going to be some people trying now, I'll tell you that. Well, um, um, I've never heard of it, though. I've seen it. That sounds, that sounds like a ridiculous combination. And it is. I, and I know that Yuha Haru has done, I believe, a 12-pound hammer while holding an inch dumbbell. I know that I've seen videos of him levering a hammer while he held on to the inch. I, the question is what the hammer was. I don't think it was a 20. Um, I asked Andrew to give it a try because he successfully levered the 20-pounder in the medley, and I did not. So I at least wanted to give him the opportunity to try it first. In fact, I don't even think I bothered trying it because he missed it. Um, he was able to control it on the descent very well, but once it got to the forehead area, he lost it, and he said, I'm fried. So I then tried inch plus 16-pound hammer, and... I was not able to get it. I, I don't know how it turned out, to be honest with you. I'm blurry with my memory. But um, it, very, very hard. And you would be surprised at how hard it is to manage that tension on both sides of your body when you have to control the descent of a giant hammer coming at your face. It's really amazing. Right. Yeah, the, the whole the whole face levering of sledgehammers is not something that gets me fired up to go in the garage yet. I got news for you. That is not like... To me, it doesn't seem like a fun activity. I mean, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure your wrists get super strong, but that does not uh, – there's plenty of other grip feats I'd rather work on than, than attacking my large forehead with a, with a piece of metal. I echo your opinion on that, but I will also say this. You would not believe the positive feedback that the double sledge lever got at the competition. Yeah, you know what? I would. It's, di it's different, though, because it's got that safety. It's got that bumper yes. system, and it's on the preacher bench. No, I, I, was, I would actually love to try that. I don't know how good I'd be at it. Probably not very good, but uh, who knows? I have been playing around a little bit with some sledgehammers in, in practice, but, but uh, yeah, that, I think it's a different kind of event than you stick your arm out and you gradually let this thing go towards your face, and then you got to have the horsepower to... Uh, <laughs> Reverse it. It's a, yeah. that's, that's no joke. Any of those sledge feats, no joke at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, man, I'm trying to think. I, I can't think of anything else to talk about with Gripmas. If you guys don't have any questions, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I got a question. How, yeah. how big, how big, what was, was there a body weight difference between you and Derniat? Was he thinner? Oh. Oh, incredible. You, it, it's the lightest I've ever seen him. I believe he weighed in at 217, and I was really? 259, 259 day of, yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, that you've been looking pretty beefy yeah. in your videos in a good way, uh, pretty strong with all your dumbbell benching. I mean, you're, you definitely look strong for sure yeah. and, and, and heavier. So, well, thanks, man. Uh, uh, I, uh, and it's I'm, true. I'm you've also, been working hard. I'm also the owner of two – York Legacy 145-pound dumbbells. I don't have them in my possession, but I own them. I have to go to York and pick them up. Um, Nate Browse and Rich Cottrell ended up discovering this incredible deal where York was selling all kinds of legacies for 50 cents a pound, and I they made a run. They got all kinds of them. They got all kinds of dumbbells from, from York as they went from New Jersey through Pennsylvania and then into Ohio. Um, and they actually, I think, overwhelmed the weight, weight limit of Rich Cottrell's um, – I'm sorry, I think it's actually Cottrell is the pronunciation. I, I apologize, Rich. Um, overwhelmed the weight uh, limits of his car with what they did. So they left my, yeah, they left my dumbbells there, so i got to run down and get them <laughs> sometime they soon. They left yours yeah, and believe it or not, I wanted 150s, and uh, Nate got there, and he's like, yeah, they don't have 150s. I was like, all right, thanks oh, anyway. It's... And then I was yeah. like, I was like, wait a minute. I'll never get the opportunity to buy 145s at that price again. Probably I should get those. So I called him back, and, and he made the payment for me. So, See, so they will you be remember here. A few weeks back, I sent you that message on uh, uh, Facebook about that, that deal. On York, you remember that? Uh, no, no recollection whatsoever. I'm not saying you didn't do it. 
Oh, I don't want no, I, 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 I sent you one on Messenger, and you, you, and you, you remarked back that you'd check it out. Wow, yeah. Because uh, totally I, I wanted to let you know about it because they still had everything in stock, and, and wow. I was tempted to um, – I was, I, I was looking to pull the trigger on some stuff too, and even the shipping wasn't, wasn't miserable considering it was coming freight. And then I wound up finding some, some used ones in a different way. But I, what I thought, what I had in mind, I figured you'd have been all over the 150s, because yeah. that that is the 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 just the biggest. I figured you'd get it, lop some handles off it, and have the most epic, epic blob father ever. And that that's just what I thought would happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Alan, I thank you for letting me know about that deal, and I do apologize for totally forgetting it. But you shouldn't be surprised though, because I'm the same guy that Jerry Shrek told. He had a complete set of York dumbbells from like five pounds to 100 pounds, all fat mans, and he offered to offered them to me for about 200 bucks. And that was at a clinic, and I forgot about it, and he told me about it the next year saying, I can't believe you didn't pick up those dumbbells that I told you about. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> totally forgot that as well. So my memory, dude, is absolutely horrible. I blame it on the fact that I'm not just holding on to one language in my head. I'm holding on to two. So plus I, I speak woman pretty well. So, <laughs> Jake, you know what I think? I think yeah. you need an IV of that pre-workout just running 24-7. <laughs> That's what I think. I think that will jumpstart the brain right there. <laughs> Maybe. Just but carry one of those little IVs around with you. That's all you need. Yeah, I, I need to I need to do that. Well, you know it's it's funny though because there's a good chance that any of those 150s that were out there are gonna are gonna they'll end up somewhere they'll be able to play it against sports because people were buying those thinking hey they're cheap it'll be awesome to have and they'll be unloading yeah. them. Yeah. That's <laughs> so they'll point. be in the you market again. Something else there, Alan. Uh, with time constraints and our traveling changes that we made, Chris and I were not able to make it to any play it against sports during this trip. And usually, anytime we're in Ohio, we hit up those spots. So. Um, some people lucked out and, or maybe I had no luck and missed some opportunities there. Who knows? Right. Yeah. Right. Huh. But yeah, so that's, that's Gripmas 2017 guys. If anybody else had any, has any questions, feel free to leave a comment and we can, uh, talk about it in a, in a future show, hopefully. Um, one, one thing I thought maybe we could give some recognition before we wrap up guys and maybe just point out the feet of the week that you've seen over the last uh, seven days. What do you think? I have a tie for two, I guess, but if somebody else wanted to go first. <laughs> no, Alan, well, hit it. Go, go ahead, dude. Okay. Hit it. Well, um, so yeah, James Rodriguez because I have a feeling that. that the one that I was going to mention is in your tie. So go ahead, Alan. Okay. Well, James Rodriguez is a 225 kilogram, uh, plate pinch. Yes, that was that up was there, fantastic. and then and then Phil Kashaba um, lifting the inch dumbbell. Oh, those were I my didn't two see for that. top. I didn't see that, dude. When when was no, that? That guy dominated. He is. He does not look like a big guy, and I don't mean to pick on him, but he. I don't know how big he yeah. is, but he's not That's about look that a body big. weight lift for him. That's about a body weight lift for him. And that guy's that guy's crushing grippers beyond that too. He's 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 a wow. phenom. He's up. We we just don't see a lot out of him. But he's doing all he's doing all the big things that everybody else is just just putting out there. You know, this I was just know, a, that was a just fantastic one of his lift. That, that dumb, I mean, James's plate pinch. I mean, they, what four or five people have done that? Maybe less. I don't know. Not many people he's can been do that. Killing that was, it that, oh yeah, yeah he's, he's been killing super it. Hard. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, that, that I did see that inch dumbbell lift, and uh, I, I, again, I'm not really familiar with him. But I saw a, a not that huge man picking up a huge dumbbell, and it was very impressive. He dominated it. It was a domination. Yep. So awesome. I'm going to also go, because I always go to the international ones, I'm going to throw in Alexi had some ridiculous deadlift again. I want to say in, on the, I don't think it was an Iron Mind Axle, but it was 222 kilos, so 490 Iron Mind Axle deadlift with some shrugs. Wow. That was, again, just ridiculous. Yeah. I, I got a feeling that Mike Burke's record's in jeopardy here in a month in L.A. I, I wow. think that thing is going to go away. Yeah. Cool. Could happen. Yeah, but yeah. no, the, the, I, Alan, those are two fantastic choices right there. Those those were mind-blowing. 
Yeah, and I'd echo I'd echo those two that you chose, Alan. Uh, the I was going to point to James with his 225 kilo pinch, uh, and I did not know about Phil, so I would say that that is just immense, incredible, and I'm proud of Phil for putting that up. And Alexei's is just mind boggling as well. Um, so fantastic, great job, guys. Way to way to scour the internet for the biggest feats of the week. Awesome job. Well, of course, Jed. Would you expect anything less? Alan is <laughs> Alan is a, a detective. He's like Sherlock Holmes of grip. He's That's on right. it. <laughs> nice. That's right, dude. <clears throat> Fantastic. All right. Anything else, guys? Before we wrap her up? No, just That's congratulations again on a fine finish. Even though you were injured, you went out and competed anyway, and there's something to be said for that. It's oh, easy to just pack it in and not do it, but. Uh, I think it's impressive that you went after it anyway. So congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, Jen. Yep, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Um, Gripmas is a great contest, and there's always lots of people out there, and I hate to miss it. And I did have to miss it last year due to a severe back injury, and I figured that this would not – this was not even in any kind of the same ballpark as that back injury. So – I wanted to make sure to get out there again, just in case. You never know what's going to happen next year. I believe Chris is going to have one more grip miss next year, and who knows, you know, uh, you know, I could be traveling or, you know, something with the family going on. You never know. So I didn't want to miss the opportunity, and I'm glad I went out myself. I had a great time with Chris Andrade. We put out some good content. I think Sean Capusta won the Internet on Friday. <laughs> and... Uh, Hope, hope to see that keep it on going as well. So, Jed, you could be releasing your uh, your full length stub volume two of training methods for the stub DVD. That that you could be working on that this time next year, right in time with the stocking stuff for for Christmas. Who well, knows? You, it's funny you mentioned that about the stub, dude. You're going to be seeing something coming out very soon about the stub, and I think it's going to take the grip world by storm. So I want you to I want you to sign one the stubologist. I want yeah. I want a signed copy of it the stubologist. You got it. you got it, buddy. You got it. All right, dude. All right. I think that's it. Alan, why don't you take it away, big boy? All right. Well, that's episode thirty-seven of this week in grip. The the gripness uh, recap. Um, make sure you comment down below. Everybody, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, and we'll be back next week with another one. We'll see you then.